parents. Wait for the light to come. Good morning, everybody. Happy New Year. Everybody stand and we'll pray and we'll get started. Awful lot of Buffalo Platinum in this room this morning. Old Bills. I kind of like this. Maybe this should be permanent. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, let's wait until they win the Super Bowl and then we'll make it permanent. That's awesome. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this beautiful sunshine this morning. Thank you that we have the, the privilege to come before you to pay you honor, to sing to you, to worship you, to praise you for who you are because you're great, you're loving, you're an awesome God, and we love you. Lord, I pray that... Uh, not only this service this morning, but throughout our year, we commit ourselves, devote ourselves, devote our time to you. It's all yours anyway. And so, Lord, I pray that over this year, 2021, you impart a, a, a spirit of reverence in mm -hmm. each of our hearts and minds to know that you are sovereign, yes. you are God. And everything belongs to you. Yes, right. On heaven, <laughs> in heaven, and on earth, That's right. it's all yours. Yes, Lord. So, Lord, we love you, and we pray a blessing over this service. Pray a blessing over everybody watching this morning, or whenever they're watching online, that they would join in the chorus along with us to tell you and reaffirm in our minds and hearts this is your year. Pray a blessing in the service, and most importantly, you're blessed by it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, let's sing nice and loud. Good morning, church. Good morning. Are you ready to worship this morning with me? I think it was really appropriate. Pastor Sonny asked uh, for a spirit of reverence this morning, and I think let's, let's act on that this morning. Let's, re let's revere God for who he is. I know it's hard for me to get on Facebook or Instagram or any of that because the second you go on, you just see how much of a mess the world is right now. And all I can think about is that Jesus is still on the throne. Amen. Every single piece of adversity that's going on in our world, he is still on the throne. So let's sing about this this morning. That's right. Oh, 
want to show us, Lord. And you give us ears to hear what you want to tell us, Lord. We praise you and we glorify you, Lord. We raise our hallelujahs to you this morning.
for because you are still on the Lord, you are still on the throne. You are still king. We praise you, King Jesus.
as long as we stay in spiritual warfare, remember our weapon is our melody. If you go home and you worship, don't don't let now Sunday mornings be the only time that you worship. I feel like the Lord is having me remind, somebody in the room needs to hear this, is don't let now be the only time that you worship. Because he is worthy of our praise every day of the week, not just for this half an hour every Sunday morning. Amen? All right, so, so when we go, my little challenge to you is that you go home this week and you praise and you pray because Lord knows we need it. Amen. Our world needs it. Our world has a lot of stuff going on right now, as we keep pointing out. And we need Jesus through it all. Amen. We don't need any political candidate like Mia was uh, saying. We don't need any of that. We need Jesus. He's the one who's going to fix our world. No, not Donald Trump, not Joe Biden, not Hillary Clinton, no, no one. We need Jesus this morning. Amen? Amen. Thanks, guys. Get my glasses to defog. That was um, that was a pretty pretty special moment, huh? In worship. I am. Um, <laughs> I love that song. on the Passion Conference worship CD from 2008 and I remember going to a class at Kings the previous, the following year and I had like just come across that CD and I was like that song immediately gripped me and uh, so I'm like flying out to LA and I remember like griping and complaining I don't ever do that. But I was like, really, I did not want to spend all the money to go out there for a week for conference and class. And I didn't want to deal with all the hokey Christian environment while at seminary when everybody's trying to prove how amazing their ministry is going to be and all that garbage. And I remember like the whole plane ride out going, God, seriously, what am I doing here? Like, this is the last place on earth I want to be is at seminary this week. And I was like, I had that in my headphones, and I'm like, man, I got a really bad attitude, but I just can't shake it. And I remember, like, get the rental car and all the fight in LA traffic and all that stuff. And I finally get up to Van Nuys, and I'm like, man, if I see another human being right now, I'm just going to punch him in the mouth. Like, I'm just, I'm just ornery, you know? And, uh, Knowing that I had to go to opening session of Fall Leadership Conference at Church on the Way, like two hours from then, I was like, I better sit in the back. <laughs> better next to the usher so they could show me out of here. <laughs> and I remember like being like, holy moly, how am I gonna get through this week? And uh, it was like sitting there, like, Killing channels on the TV, burning in time till I had to go to conference. And uh, God was like, Hello, you've had that song in your head all this whole trip so far. I'm like, why don't you worship? And I was like, I don't feel like worshiping. <laughs> Everything stinks. And uh, so a little time goes by, and God's like, Hello. <laughs> You know how it is, right? When God's got your number and you're like, go away from me. I don't want to hear from you right now. <laughs> and uh, so sure enough, I get my computer out. I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. And so I put that song on and it was like two seconds. Flat on my face on that dirty hotel carpet. <laughs> like, oh, I don't even want to think what's on this floor. And I'm just weeping. And I broke. God was like, this is all that matters. Between me and you is all that matters. Forever. It's all that matters. So you can complain all you want, but this is all that matters. And I was like, 
it was awesome. It was just this incredible time of worship. The people below me and next to me in the rooms were probably like, what is going on in that room? Because I had the music cranked, and I'm wailing. I'm like blubbering, you know. And uh, so I get up. Of course, attitude adjustment, right? Duly kind of spanked by God. <laughs> Humbled. And then I get in the car, and I drive over, and I sit in the very back, because that's what I always like to do anyway. And uh, I was like, what are you doing? You need to move up. You're the first person here. I mean, you got this huge auditorium. You don't sit in the back, really? So I go, okay. And I move up like a section. Uh, I did say move up, did I? <laughs> so then I move up two more. And I'm like, okay, that's it. I'm not sitting in the front row of church on the way. I mean, this place seats 7,000 people. No. <laughs> so I'm like four rows from the front. Guess what the opening song was that night? Guess who was sitting right next to the Kleenex box? This guy. Like, God's like, listen, in this room, you think I'm not having more conversations than just the one I'm having with you? Like, it matters how we spend each moment and how we deal with our own crappy attitudes sometimes, right? Especially in light of what's going on in our world, like devoting ourselves to Him is all He wants. All the rest of this stuff can just go away. It doesn't matter. It's what we have with Him that matters, regardless of what's going on around us. Listen, if you think this is bad in our country now, you should see what's going on around the rest of the world. There's, there's believers being tortured and yet they're still praising the holy God. Like, we gotta get a grip and realize he has to be priority. Alright, there's my soapbox. So, <clears throat> before I dive in, for those of you that hadn't heard, my father passed away uh, two days after Christmas, most of you know, but I know this has been a little crazy time with services and stuff. But um, it was rough. It was definitely not what I preferred to do over the Christmas holidays, but we, it was a blessing to be able to be with family. And uh, it was an incredible experience to not only be with our immediate family and family and friends from back home, but you guys blessing us with food from Wegmans. They catered and sent, like, I think we ate four days in a row on the one shipment from Wegmans <laughs> catered food. It was awesome. And the cards, the text messages, the calls, everything. Just, um, we're so blessed to know that you guys care about us and you're here with us. And um, as much heartache as it's been over the last couple of weeks, it's uh, heartwarming to know how much we're loved. And so thank you. We appreciate it from the bottom of our hearts. Um, <clears throat> for the last, I don't know, two months I've been praying about, okay, God, what's a, if we make it out of 2020, what's the theme for next year? <laughs> I feel like we were kicking and screaming our way out of 2020, huh? And that's hilarious because in January, it was like every preacher on the planet was talking about what an amazing year it was going to be, right? <laughs> Even this guy. Remember, 2020, it's our year. It's going to be amazing. All the best is coming our way. <laughs> yeah, 2020 vision. Sarah thinks uh, our theme for this year should be 2021, get your eyes checked. <laughs> it's like, made it through last year. That's our theme for this year, <laughs> right? But um, over the last couple months, I just have been really struck with not just what's going on in our world, but like 
okay, God, how are we to embrace a new year and a new season without the usual pie in the sky, right? Super idealistic slogan or whatever, and yet at the same time be hopeful and expect God to do great things this year. And I can only settle back on this idea of 2021, his year. Did you feel that in the room? Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit speaking to us this morning through worship and then <laughs> the simplicity of a message of honestly, as followers of Christ, we have to reorient our focus on him. Right. Redevote even the smallest moments of our day to him because they belong to him. Right. And I think with the, the painful experience of losing my dad over the holidays and realizing that it was coming leading up to the holidays, <laughs> there's this urgency that strikes you for those of you who have lost loved ones. The time is not ours. Every second of the day is borrowed time from the one who gives it to us. And so I just feel this sense of urgency of allowing him to keep that kind of sober thought on our minds and hearts and at the same time have an exuberance like <laughs> carpe diem, seize the day, seize the moment, like live for every moment. Isn't that an old hymn? Live every moment. Isn't that an old hymn? I can't remember. I've lost everybody sometimes. <laughs> I just am struck with that thought of what if we all put some more energy into declaring that this year is his? Amen. Regardless of what happens in our in our daily life circumstance wise, this year is his. Amen. And so if we actually make a conscious effort every day to declare that, like this this moment I'm in right now, and even like my <laughs> two cents I just gave about having a not so great attitude what if we just said oh yeah remember this is his am I going to bellyache or am I going to turn it over to him <laughs> embrace the fact that he's here with me and so that's my thought this morning and I am struck with this scripture in Philippians 1.6 I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Meaning, he, he, you wouldn't be sitting here if he didn't already start something in you. And so, how many days have we wasted not embracing this process of him redeeming us? I know I've wasted so much time in my daily life that I could be prioritizing things better. <laughs> and God's probably up in heaven going, hello, the head's getting thicker, the knock's getting louder, are you going to listen, right? I mean, does anybody else, that's how God talks to you? Yeah, he does to me, yeah. right? Like, hello, my fly. Yeah. <laughs> How much time are you going to waste today? Can you give me five minutes? Imagine if we thought of God speaking in that way to us. How much maybe we would, oh, yeah, maybe I should spend a few minutes with him today instead of wasting my time or complaining about how bad my time is. Right? So I've been doing this devotional with a bunch of other pastors from around several of four square districts and this latest devotional we're doing kind of an overview of the whole Bible and it was like the second day we landed on probably one of the most scratch your head portions of scripture in the Bible anybody ever done a book study of Ecclesiastes besides Jen 
<laughs> I mean, I, I don't, I think I've read little portions here and there over the 30 plus years that I've been following Jesus, but never once have I said, oh, you know what book I should study right now? Ecclesiastes sounds awesome. So we're reading this Ecclesiastes chapter 3, and I'm going, what the heck is that doing in the Bible? Has anybody ever read Ecclesiastes? It is the most sourpuss, awful, like, whoa, Debbie Downer. What is that doing in the Bible? Right? I'm telling you, go home this afternoon and pull out Ecclesiastes. I, I don't recommend camping out too long, but just do a quick skim and see, like, Whoa, bro. So it's written by Solomon, right? David's son. And he turns out to eclipse David's accomplishments, right? He's richer. He's wiser. He has more peace. The kingdom is bigger. He gets the temple built. And there's all these accomplishments. He has wives like nobody ever wants. Thousands and concubines and just crazy, like, how's this guy in the Bible, right? So he does all these great things. Solomon's a great king on the surface. But he writes this book, Ecclesiastes, at the end of his life. Why? Because he realized he didn't devote any of it to God. He spent his whole reign as king doing whatever he wanted thinking that that's what God wanted him to do. And at the end of his life, he said, it was all for nothing. I wasted my life. He did everything anybody on earth would ever dream of doing. Be the richest, be the most liked, be the wisest, have the most power, have the most peace even, in a kingdom. And yet, at the end of his life, he said, what was it all for? So I was struck with that, thinking, this is kind of a perfect setup for 2021, for us to focus. And coming through, memorializing my father, realizing here's a man who had very little regret in his life. And not only that, us, the family, because of the way we were able to spend his last moments with him, and he knew we loved him, we could memorialize him with no regret. It's, it's poetic. And yet, most of us go, out, go throughout our day without ever even thinking about, what's the point of what I'm doing today? Is this my day, or is it God's day? Is this my job, or is it his job? Is this my family member, or is it his family? And what am I doing to commit and devote this to God in a deeper and more meaningful way? I think that that's kind of the, the, the nutshell of what God wants us to focus on this year. If we would commit maybe just a little click more farther into devotion to him this year, I think it would put a smile on his face. Let's read Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Starting in verse 1. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. <laughs> like in a pandemic. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. See, Solomon 
<laughs> he's lamenting his own life. He said, I've gone through all these things. But for what? Verse 9. What gain has the worker from his toil? I have seen a business that God has given to the children of man to be busy with. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity in the man's heart, yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I perceived that there is nothing better for them than to be joyful and to do good as long as they live. Also, that everyone should eat and drink and take pleasure in all his toil. This is God's gift to man. I perceived that whatever, whatever God does endures forever. Nothing can be added to it, nor anything taken away from it. God has done it so that people fear before him. That which is already has been. That which is to be already has been. And God seeks what has been driven away. If you read in a study Bible and you get the context of those sentences as Solomon's writing, they're sentences of regret. He's saying, what's the point if God's not in it? Verse 16, moreover, I saw under the sun that in the place of justice, even there was wickedness. And in the place of righteousness, even there was wickedness. I said in my heart, God will judge the righteous and the wicked. For there is a time for every matter and for every work. I said in my heart with regard to the children of man that God is testing them that they may see that they themselves are but beasts. For what happens to the children of man and what happens to the beasts is the same. As one dies, so dies the other. They all have the same breath, and man has no advantage over the beasts, for all is vanity. All go to one place, all are from the dust, and to dust all return. Who knows whether the spirit of man goes upward and the spirit of the beast goes down into the earth. So I saw that there is nothing better than that a man should rejoice in his work, for that is his lot. Who can bring him to see what will be after him? Solomon's wrestling with how he squandered his time because he chose early on in his rule to enjoy life to the fullest. He, he perceived, he says in that portion of scripture, that it's good to enjoy all the fruits of your toil, the things in life that come your way, because God blesses us with that. See, we can get off balance either way. We can disregard the things that God blesses us with in life, or we can embrace them, embrace them so much that we forget who gave them to us. And I think there's a time in the Western American church that's here now already where God is shaking us awake to realize, listen, I want you to enjoy life. I want you to embrace it to the fullest. But at the same time, understand that I am priority. Amen. That it's the life I give you. Right. You don't own any of it. Right? I'm so struck with interactions from people from all areas of my dad's life as we're preparing for the memorial service. And all these different people came out of the woodwork talking about how my dad saved their life. And you've heard the stories of my dad came to Christ and sobered up in the early 80s, mid 80s. And uh, one of the guys at the church my mom goes to now, who is an electrician in town, shared the gospel with him for a long time. And my 
man was resistant for a long time, but when he reached the end of himself, he was that guy, Bruce Hesse, was the first guy my dad reached up to. And he helped them financially, he helped them with time, he would drag them to Bible study, he would go and meet him somewhere, and they would study the Bible together, pray together, to help him get out of the addiction and the destructive life that he was in. And um, <laughs> my dad immediately made that his mission to pass that on. And so I started hearing these stories from people about one guy in town who was kind of like the town drunk. And so much so that he didn't have a license anymore and he would ride his bike. <laughs> because that's all he had left. And he was didn't work, all that stuff. But there was a, a story about how that guy's bike ended up in our front, front yard one day. And my mom didn't, she was like, what is so-and-so's bike doing in the yard? And my dad was like, well, I've been sharing the gospel with him for months and asking him if he's ready for a change. And every day he blows me off. Well, today he didn't blow me off. He showed up at the house and said, Merle, take me to detox. I'm ready to change. And there were so many stories like that. But the beauty is, is that <laughs> Most people would see my dad as just a semi-retired guy who works in the, his wood shop out in his garage, but he used that as a tool for evangelism. There were so many stories of people, like us, the family, had no idea how many people were confronted with faith in Christ because my dad used that shop as the venue, the connection point. He never went to adult assembly, got out of the church, but the church that family was always in him. And it just blew my mind, the stories. High school kids, like classmates that I had in high school that I didn't care to even be in the same room with. I talked about how much my dad just loved them out of their mess. And it's like, wow. How much of my day do I waste not engaging with people? How much of my day do I waste not loving others, especially the unlovable ones? And so I'm struck with that, and I hope that you're struck with it today and this year as we approach 2021. God, it's yours. What do you want me to do with it? If we can get that in our heart and in our brain, maybe we'll have a little bit better year than last year. Right? It's his year. I want to read from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And I think I read this last year, earlier in the year. Maybe it was two years ago, but Second Corinthians chapter 5, starting in verse 6. So we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. Paul's writing to the church in Corinth to say, listen, get together in a church building and hoot and holler for Jesus is one thing. But what you do in every moment of every day is what really matters. Amen. How many of us use little moments in our day to influence others, to point them towards Christ? We all love the message of grace. 
We all live under Jesus' grace. However, we have, we have to make use of this life he gives us. Amen. Is it his life or is it our life? I'm not saying somehow today you got to be perfect. All I'm saying is making a conscious effort each day to give a little more to him. Ask him what he would like you to do with your life. Verse 11. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade others. But we, what we are is known to God. And I hope it is known also to your conscience. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you cause to boast about us so that you may be able to answer those who boast about outward appearance and not about what is in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ controls us because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him, who for their sake died and was raised. Amen. Verse 16, from now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, meaning the work of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself. He still is not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us, we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. Verse 21, for our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. What Paul's trying to convince them of is, listen, <laughs> just like I said before, getting it together in a building once a week is not our job. Our job is to persuade people to be reconciled to God. Amen. To come to know the love, the grace, the mercy, the forgiveness that Jesus gives. That's our job. I hate to use the government analogy right now, but an ambassador has a responsibility to represent the person that appointed him to be an ambassador or her to be an ambassador. It's their job. It's expected. Listen, as believers, we're expected to speak about him, to live like we know him and love him. It doesn't mean some semblance of perfection. What it means is a passion, a devotion, so that nobody could say, I thought that guy was a Christian. <laughs> Even on social media. Right? Like that each moment I get convicted of it on the highway. <laughs> That's why I don't put Jesus bumper stickers on my vehicle. <laughs> right? Because somebody would be like, oh, okay. That's a good Jesus representation. <laughs> but there's some weight to that responsibility from all of us. He's not telling me to be some Jesus freak going around all day long and thumping the Bible. But he is looking for somebody to represent him when an opportunity is presented. Right? We're all 
I'm going to stand for him. And this isn't a guilt message. This is an inspiration message. He's going to read off the good if we devote ourselves. Right? He's going to say, well done to each and every one of us if we continue this faith journey with him. And that's what we're all hoping for. There's a whole world around us that don't even know yet that that's what they're also hoping for. To stand before him someday and hear him and see him face to face when he says, oh, I'm so glad you made it. I'm so glad you're here. Let's devote this year to God. It's his. Forget about lofty goals and all that stuff. Let's just devote the year to him. Amen. Let him fill in the blanks. Let's devote ourselves to him this year. Imperfections and all. The stuff we struggle with. Our bad attitudes. It doesn't matter. Just say, here I am, God. Messed up as I am. It's all he wants. Let's devote our family and friends to him. Even the ones we don't get along with. Especially the ones we don't get along with. Let's devote our jobs. Our schools. Our daily interactions in our neighborhood. Our grocery stores. What else? Maybe not Mark the Basket. Yeah, Mark the Basket. Walmart, you can check that out. Don't worry about that. Target. Target too. Okay. Let's devote our neighborhoods, our nation, and our world. Let's declare this as his, his year. See, everywhere we go in life, we can be on offense. Have you thought about that lately? Like, even in an environment where everybody hates you, in your spirit, you can still be on offense and claim God as sovereign over the situation. How many of us have been inspired by people who've been martyred, and as they're being tortured and put to death, they cry out praise to God. You know, we can do that in every moment of every day. Not just big, crazy ones like that, but even in the little ones. Let's make this year more of that. You with me? Let's stand and pray. Lord Jesus, right now I declare myself yours. Amen. I'm yours. And I pray everyone here, everyone watching online is doing that right now as well. Hallelujah. We put ourselves in your hands. Knowing that there are things in our lives that disappoint you. Mm -hmm. Knowing that there are things we're still so messed up about. We still make the devotion to say we're yours. Yes, Lord. Yes. Help us to be more of the people you want us to be. Yes, Lord. Lord, we now also offer our year 2021 to you. It's yours. You are sovereign over everything. Good, bad, ugly in our life. It's all yours. And you promise to not leave us alone. God, I pray that everyone embracing this moment of prayer would understand that you are with us. You're with him. You're with me. Lord, we love you. We ask a, a blessing over this year because we're going to give more of it to you to get more honor and glory to you yes. and the good times and bad may we praise you for who you are an awesome loving forgiving God and God I pray that if there's anyone watching today or anyone in this room that hasn't made that
that devotion to you ever or even recently that today would be a day. The day that they say, okay, God, I'm yours. Show me how to follow you. Lord, we love you and we thank you. We ask your blessing over all of us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, don't zone out yet because we have a couple of announcements before you can walk out and figure out what you're going to eat for Sunday lunch. I know that's like what happens, right? As soon as the sermon is over, you're like, what am I eating for lunch and where are we going? Okay, so it is birthday Sunday. If you have a January birthday, stand up. We want to wave at you. Woo! One, two, three. All right, January birthdays. All right, very cool. Happy birthday. If you're on Facebook with us, send an emoji if it's your birthday in January. Um, Okay, a couple other things. Prayer meeting. We are restarting weekly prayer meetings. Yes, sorry. I got to jump back. If it is your January birthday, when you leave, we have a candy bar for you. So if you're on Facebook, I'm so sorry, you do not get a candy bar, but if you're here, you get a candy bar, and Pastor Jen has those in the lobby. Okay. Now, uh, we are restarting our prayer meetings, weekly prayer meetings that will start this Wednesday at 4 o'clock. So if you would like to join us for prayer, please meet here in the sanctuary. If you have any questions, you can speak to Pastor Rita. She will be heading that up and um, let her know if you intend on joining. Whether you do or don't, she's going to be here, but it's always better to have more friends. Okay, also, we are participating in the 21 days of prayer and fasting. Do we have a slide for that, Nathan? Yes, okay. It's in there somewhere, so I'll keep talking. Um, Our entire denomination, four score churches across the globe, are participating in this 21 days of prayer and fasting. So it did start on January 1st, but it's not too late to jump into it or restart. You know, there's a lot of options, whatever you want to do. Today happens to be day 10, but you can certainly jump in from day 10 and do 11 days of prayer and fasting, or you can restart at day one at your leisure and just kind of follow those prayer points along. So on Facebook every day we do post the scripture reading, the prayer points, um, and the reflection items. So if you want to jump onto Facebook first thing in the morning, you can see that and then save it for the rest of the day. If you are following along and you're a Facebook user, comment on those posts. You know, something that God is speaking to you. We want to be doing this as a community of faith. And so if you can just kind of spark the conversation, I guess, and and have some dialogue with us about what God is saying to you, that would be awesome. Um, And if you are fasting Facebook or something, let me know and I can send you a PDF to your email and you can just have that so that you do not have to get on Facebook. I know some people are done with Facebook this week. (laughs) Do not want to turn it back on again (laughs) forever. So if that's you, let me know. Also, uh, let's see here. We are having in-person youth group on the 29th. That is Friday night. So if you are a youth or you have a youth, mark your calendar. That will be here at 7 o'clock. That's the last Friday of the month. Okay? Teenagers, you got that in your calendar. Request the day off from work. If we only have youth group once a month, you got to be here. Okay. Um, also, the church staff and the pastors would like to thank all of you for the Christmas presents and the cards that you blessed us with. Thank you so very much. Um, so much outpouring of your love for us at Christmas time, and um, we really appreciate that. So thank you very much if, if you gave us something. We love gifts. Everybody loves gifts. Presents are fun. Yes, giving is both my receiving love language and by showing. What? How do you say it? It's just my love language. I like to give and I like to receive. It's my favorite. All right. So, um, last thing, if you would like to give online your tithes or your offerings. Um, you can do that by going to BrocktonFoursquare.org. When you pull that up, there's a little button that says menu. Hit the menu. 
and then hit online giving. Super easy, I tested it from the back row, it works. So if you would like to do that, instead of bringing cash or a check, if you're like me, you do not walk around with a checkbook, this is a great way for you to still give to the Lord. All right, let's stand and pray. Jesus, we love you. We are grateful to be in your house today. Lord, I pray that you would bless the givers, bless our church family, bless those who could not be with us today. Lord, I pray that each member of this family would feel a special outpouring of your love today, Jesus. That you would pour out your healing, both for our physical afflictions as well as our inside emotional things. Thank you, Jesus, for the opportunity to gather together, both online and corporately. And please bless and multiply the gifts that we give you as we exit this building today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, so Pastor Jen, can you dismiss? Okay, Pastor Jen is going to be dismissing you today. Remember, do not gather on the walkway ramp. You have to, like, go further out, but then you can talk to your friends. Thank you so much. Have a good week.